Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. I'm a little bit under the weather today, so if I'm a little slower than normal, it's just because I think I have the flu, a little bit of a fever, but I'm not one to sit around all day. I got shit to do. I'm out here doing this for you guys. Um, this is my C5 Corvette. I wanna show you guys the procedure that I do when I need to remove odor from interior in the from the interior of a vehicle now this i bought this car used uh, it's a 2004 c5 corvette it's the base automatic nothing super fancy but i love the car um so the problem <laughs> the problem with this thing is uh the interior is relatively clean i haven't detailed it since i got it i did one basically waterless wash with the infinite use detail juice one uh probably a couple weeks ago um I got a lot of cars and not a lot of time, so when I have the opportunity to not only take care of something uh, from my personal list of shit to do, which is generally something I'm drowning in, um, I wanna be able to shoot the video for you guys so you can see how I do it. So this particular car, the outside's not bad. It's got a few scratches that I think I can remove uh, it is silver so it doesn't show a lot of swirls or whatever it's pretty swirled up but you can't really see so i'm eventually going to polish this vehicle i i generally only use all-in-ones on my own vehicles because i'm not a swirl nazi i'm not trying to track down every scratch it's not realistic especially when you move the cars around as much as i do and they have to sit in such cramped quarters in the garage and my other garage that i have off premises of my uh my home which is where i'm at now um i have another garage where i store cars it's a lot of toys not a lot of time so anytime i get an opportunity to take care of uh some personal stuff and show you guys how i do it that's what i want to do so that's where we're at so this vehicle the interior is not bad it's not disgusting it's never been smoked in it just I got it from a retired anesthesiologist who looked like he was really just going downhill with his life. Um, the car kind of smells like old man piss and mothballs. It is it is the most vile combo of scents that I can even talk about. Now, I did a couple tests prior to today uh, i actually ran my ozone generator in the car without cleaning anything i ran the ozone gener generator twice in this vehicle for two hours each time the first time did a little bit the scent came back and i'm and i knew that that was going to happen because uh you basically the the bottom line is when you want to remove a smell you got to go to the root of the problem you have to remove what's causing the smell and then you can remove the smell uh, a lot of times the smell will linger after what's causing the smell uh, is gone, which is why ozone generators are so important. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive now. The one I use, I think I paid 70 bucks on Amazon for, so um, definitely a good investment. So, and I'm, I guess I may as well just show you the one that I use. So this right here is the Inner Zen. Uh, this is the unit that I use. Um, 100 watts, it doesn't tell you the what exactly the specs are, but I'll, I'll try to find those specs for you. But this is the one I use. Um, you literally just set these things inside the center of the vehicle uh, and then let them run for however long you want, up to two hours. So two hours, you should pretty much have everything out of the car uh, as far as the bad sense. But the ozone generator should be used last. Um, I'm going to show you how I go about removing odors from interiors and I'm going to also shoot you an update video of how it all worked out. So what I always do on any time I'm trying to clean an interior or even remove a scent is, is pretty much the same thing. I'll start by vacuuming the interior out, wiping it down, get it generally clean first. That's the first order of business. Um, the second order of business is to basically damp shampoo everything. Uh, if you've got heavy soiling, you may want to pull the interior, pressure wash it. I'm not a fan of steam. I'm not a fan of carpet extractors. I believe that neither one are needed. Uh, the carpet extractor, basically, if you've got heavy soiled um, upholstery or fabric or even the foam, 
uh, the, the problem with the extractor is you're gonna over wet it and you're gonna wake up all that stuff from the bottom that won't suck up through the extractor. So you're just pissing off all that soiling so that it's gonna creep up through the fibers as everything dries. You'll never get it all out with an extractor, especially if it's you know a, a, a lot of liquid that got dripped down in the foam. So I'm not a fan of extractors. I don't believe them to be the end all be all. I think that you know one of two extremes is it, either the basic version, which is spray, scrub, and wipe with uh, my universal clean and prep, which is what I'm gonna do with that. I'm gonna do all the carpets. It does have leather interior, and so the leather is going to have to be cleaned as well, and so is the headliner if you have one. Fortunately, in this car, there's no headliner. It's just the glass roof. So I'm basically getting off easy on this one, but don't forget to do your trunk. So wherever the soiling is, that's where you wanna go, but you also have a lot of smells uh, if you've got a hatchback or whatever back in the, the trunk type carpet. So I'm gonna pop the hatch, I'm gonna sh damp shampoo, uh, all of that. I'm also gonna clean the door panels and everything. So you wanna clean your headliner, your door panels, your, in, your leather or your upholstery and then really clean the carpets and your mats. Uh, and that's gonna, that's the first order of business. So uh, with all that said, this is my C5 Vet. Uh, like I said, I have never detailed this car uh, before. I've had it for a few months. Uh, I really haven't done much to it. Uh, really haven't even driven it much. But first order, like I said, is to go ahead and vacuum all these the, the carpet out and then uh, start scrubbing everything down with the universal clean and prep. Um, you can see I've got the glass roof and then there is some carpet back there in the back, which I'll damp shampoo that out too but i'll show you what i mean by damp shampoo i'll pull the mats out and do those where you can see them in better light i've got my air injection system uh set up right here i'm actually going to be shooting the universal clean and prep through the uh hplv spray gun uh you use less product that way and um you're you are more efficient so the bottom line is you get the aid of uh, the air, the compressed air shooting on your surface, and that is actually going to help break up the contamination so it's easier to clean it because in a lot of cases you're unbonding those contaminants so it makes it easier for them to remove with that compressed air. But beyond that, because of uh, the small nozzle size, you're actually using less product, which you're being more efficient with less product uh, and obviously the less product you use to get the job done properly, uh, the more money goes in your product, your pocket. Uh, fortunately with the one system, which is what I'm referring to, uh, you're already saving tons of money on product cause they're all hyper concentrates anyway. So you're already getting a good deal. If you do all that simple math, uh, the sticker price on those products might shock some of you people who don't understand simple math, but as soon as you do the breakdown of cost per use, you'll see the incredible value that those products offer. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing vacuumed out and um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull the mats. I'll clean those first on camera. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. I'm gonna be using the brand new Universal Clean and Prep from the One System, which is on detailjuice.com right now. Uh, this is the best of the best in cleaners in my lineup. I'm going to be also using this uh, small HPLV gun from Harbor Freight. This one I think was 15 bucks. So anyway, you pull the top off this thing. I've got some pre-diluted Universal Clean and Prep in this gallon jug. Um, this stuff mixes up to one part product to 11 parts water. I filled this cup halfway. I don't know if you can tell. So it's got two ounces, it's a four, four ounce cup. It's got two ounces of product in it. And that should be all I need to do this whole vehicle. I'm talking about the leather. And that this is diluted one part to 11 parts. Uh, so it's maxed out on dilution, but it still works fantastic. So I've got about a half of a gallon of water in this bucket and a clean microfiber towel. The first order of business is to vacuum your mat or vacuum your carpet, whatever. And then I give it a quick spray with the cleaner. Then the next order of business is taking your uh, hard bristle brush 
cleaning it up is breaking up all the dirt and grime and whatever's in the carpet. Then I take the cleaner again. Give it a spray. Pull my damp towel out of the bucket. Then I start hand scrubbing all the carpeted areas. Hand scrub the plastic. And that's it. This now has all the dirt on it from the carpet and I'll put it back in there, wring it out, and then the cycle moves on. <clears throat> if you wanna put fancy lines in your mats, carpet lays down two different ways. So I usually take my brush down, up, down, up, and just do it throughout the whole situation if you want those fancy lines in it. I'm not a huge fan of that. Customers don't really appreciate it most of the time and it takes extra time, so I don't usually do it. But that is a way that you can get it knocked out. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on and clean out the rest of the carpet in the car and then I'll bring you back when I'm cleaning the leather. So you've seen me do the damp shampoo on the floor mat. I have went ahead and knocked out the damp shampoo on the driver's side of this car including the back right here. I have not done the trunk area. I haven't done the passenger side, but um, I have wrung this towel out again. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the door panels and the windows while I'm in here. Yes, the Universal Clean and Prep is safe on window tent. I'm gonna spray it directly on this window tent, no problem at all. Um, this does have antimicrobial uh, killing properties, um, so you are killing some germs. That's the same with most cleaners, they are attacking the germs, uh, to my knowledge, uh, which I would say is pretty consider considerable. Um, so that's the door panel and the window cleaned. You definitely want to get whatever is on the windshield, or I'm sorry, on the windows off. Um, if there was a smoker in the car, that tar is all over the windows. So you definitely want to clean those windows really well. Uh, and that headliner is super important. Like I said, there's no headliner in here, but this also was not a smoker's car at any time in its life. I know that for a fact. Um, because I bought it from the second owner and the first owner, um, I just feel like I would be able to tell. I've got incredible scent, um, sensory situation. I, I'm, I, I got a good nose, that's the bottom line. Um, so I don't believe this has ever been smoked in. The uh, guy I bought it from says it hasn't, doesn't seem to have ever been. So I'm cool with that. Anyway, this door panel is clean. The window's clean, the carpet's clean, it's time to knock out this leather. But before I do that, I always want to rinse out my towel. If your water in your bucket gets a little bit oversaturated with uh, soiling, it's a great idea to go ahead and switch that. Um, see if I can show you what the, the water looks like right now. Is not amazing, but not bad enough for me to go ahead and uh, change the water out. We'll go a little bit longer before we do that. 
So, now, show you how I go about cleaning these leather seats. Um, same damp towel, same cleaner, and let's check where we're at with the, uh, yeah, I probably used half of what was in there so far, but I've been really, really spraying it. Because you don't get a ton out once you adjust, adjust your spray out properly between your air pressure and your product spray. Um, you really, really are saving a lot of uh, product. So I'm going to go ahead and use my hard bristle brush on the leather. I would recommend a boar's hair brush if uh, you are questioning whether or not this is safe enough to use. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this, the leather down with the cleaner. I'm just going to do that front section for now. I'm going to give it a light scrub with this. Very light scrub. Give it a little bit more cleaner. If you feel like you want to wear a respirator around the uh, all of the the vapors, I definitely would recommend it. I don't, I know what's in the products. I don't believe them to be harming me. So I'm not gonna wear a respirator, but you can do that at, at your own risk. So with that said, this front section is all clean. And we got a lot of wear with these cracks and that kind of thing. Even if you get the cracks all cleaned out of dirt, they're still gonna be a little bit discolored because that's just how it works when the dye gets flexed a lot over the years they discolor slightly so that was the damp shampoo on carpet i just showed you how i'm going to clean this leather so i'm going to go ahead and get to that and then go ahead and finish the rest of the car and then i'll be back to you with what i do for the ultimate smell removal i mean you the most of the battle is going to the root of the problem and removing that issue uh, the rest of the battle is taking care of the lingering smell and i'm going to show you how to do that with two different awesome tips that you may or may not ever have, have heard about, but one of which you saw earlier was the ozone generator, but that alone will not fix it. You have to clean it out first. You cannot just throw a air freshener in the car and expect for the scent to go away. You gotta clean it at the root or don't bother with it because you're wasting your time if you're not taking the root of the problem out and then doing the extra steps that I'm about to show you to really fix the problem. I'm about fixing the problem when you can, but we as detailers are repairing problems. I mean, that's that's the, the long and short of it is you're a repair person, not a fixer. Because I wouldn't even consider paint correction fixing a problem. You're actually removing material that was meant to be there. So you're really repairing it. You're taking away material that was intended to be there in order to make it look better. So that's a repair. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead with this and then the last step after I get everything cleaned uh, and, and damp shampooed is gonna be uh, to vacuum it out again because when you're in there with your scrub brush, you're breaking up a lot of the dirt that's embedded in the carpet is coming up to the surface. So you wanna vacuum all that out before you move forward. So I'm gonna knock all this out and I'll be back with the next step. Okay. So, I have shampooed all of the interior with the damp shampoo method and the universal clean and prep from my brand new one system on detailjuice.com. And I cleaned all the interior with that uh, universal clean and prep diluted one part product to 11 parts water. So on this whole car from, I mean, I know it's a small car, I get it. I know you guys are gonna mention that um, yes, it's a small car. I overused the product uh, on purpose and I only used the equivalent of about a quarter of an ounce of the hyper concentrate that the Universal Clean and Prep comes in. So that's considerable. I haven't done that simple math. I really don't care. I know that the products are superior in value. Um, but I got all the leather cleaned. I got all the plastic door panels, plastic speaker covers, plastic everything, uh, leather, and all the carpet shampooed with the damp shampoo method, uh, with right at a quarter of an ounce of the product, if if even that. Um, so I also cleaned up all the windows. 
What I'm going to do now is the one of the most the two most important steps. Um, like I said, the most important step is removing the actual issue. You have to take care of the issue before the smell will go away. There is no shortcut to this process. I know uh, as detailers, we're always looking for a way out of the long-term detail. When it comes to removing a smell, you have got to go to the root of the problem, eliminate the actual problem, then you deal with the, the actual smell. So once the uh, root of the problem is gone, then you can focus on the actual point of the detail, if you will. This is a Dakota odor bomb. Um, I am going to put those on detailjuice.com. You will be able to get them. Um, the benefit to these odor bombs is they chemically remove the odor. odor. Um, the specific reason I'm going with this for this point of the detail, instead of just throwing the ozone generator in here, which will do a similar situation, is this actually, I'm gonna turn the car on and put the AC on full blast so that the AC will circulate inside the car and uh, it will push this chemical through my ducting system for the AC and heat so that any bad uh, bacteria that's in there, this is gonna kill that. Uh, this is the neutral air with no lingering fragrance, the can says, uh, versus we can get them in lots of different scents. I'm not going to bother with the different scents because it's hard to say what people like. And uh, with my experience with these scent pads that I sell on DetailJuice.com, it's a wide spectrum of what people want. But I do know that this neutral air won't leave a chemical smell. It will not leave a smell that someone doesn't like. And I believe this to be the answer to one size fits all, if you will. So because I want my, in, my cabin uh, to smell differently when the AC kicks on or the heat kicks on and blows out of the vents, I'm going to use the odor bomb. If I didn't have an issue with the vents pushing out nasty smells, I would skip this and I would go right into either like changing out the cabin air filter, which this car does not have, the newer cars definitely have them, uh, which could be the root of a smell. But on this one, since it doesn't have one, I'm just gonna try to circulate some of this chemical through the um, ducting system and hopefully it will kill the bacteria. Then I'm gonna go another round with the ozone generator after that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this thing off uh, in the car, remove the lid, you usually want to put it right in the center of the vehicle, so I'm going to put an old towel down. And um, in order to uh, make this spray up and circulate, uh, you want to completely depress this tab there, and it will spray up. Now, yes, it's going to get all over my uh, roof because of the closeness to it. I'm not worried about that, it'll wipe off. I've not had any issues with the chemical in that discoloring anything. Um, but you do wanna put a uh, towel down because it's gonna spray up kind of liquidy and it will land on other things. I'm not real worried about it. Like I said, uh, if you're worried about it, cover more stuff up. I generally don't, I just put a towel down and uh, we'll release the contents of it right here. But what I'm gonna do first is started the car and I put the AC system on full blast all the way cold and as high as the fans will go so that we're circulating air I also put it on uh, I wanted to bring air from the outside in to circulate so we're gonna be exchanging the bad air inside for the fresh air outside through the ducting and through the system you can switch it to cabin circulation only but I want fresh air from the outside to be circulating in. So like I said, you just depress the, the cap here, hold it down, and there we go. Um, I'm probably gonna let that ride for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, let the product do its job. I don't know if you can, see, oh yeah, you can see in there. It's spraying. And then the AC is going to circulate all of that. Now, this is not the recommendation of uh, the Dakota odor bomb, 
this is something that I've been doing for years that I know works. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that circulate for 20, 30 minutes with the car running. Uh, and then after that, I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like after that bottle has, or that can has expired uh, all of uh, the product in it. All right, it's been about 20, 25 minutes now and the car's still running. I'm gonna pull you off the tripod now and show you what it looks like on the interior when you use these odor bombs. You can see it got all over the place and up there. So I'm gonna pull it out of the car now, wipe it down, and we'll bring, I'll be right back. We'll go ahead and turn the car off. I'll be right back with you once I clean this mess up. All right, so it definitely smells a lot better in here. Um, I did try to smell it when the AC was blowing and I couldn't identify that nasty pissy old man smell that I uh, could smell before which is why I did the detail but you notice everything looks fine now there's I just literally just wiped it all up didn't hurt anything looks great um, you just have to wipe it up and you're good um, because this is my car I'm gonna go ahead and take an extra step I'm gonna use the new universal dressing from uh, my new one system at detailjuice.com and uh, basically just hydrate these seats um, I'm gonna use the universal dressing with the air injection which I'll show you through that same purple gun from Harbor Freight uh, I'm going to use it diluted one part product to about six parts water. Um, the label says use it up to one part product to three parts water. You can dilute it more, but you will, you will just basically get less shine, which is what I want. I want all the UVA and UVB protection that it provides, but I don't want the gloss. So I'm going to go ahead and get you guys set up and then set up the air injection, uh, to spray the universal dressing on the complete interior. All right, so I have, I'm running, uh, I turned the pressure down, I'm running about 45 PSI out of the gun. Um, I'm running different pressures than the manufacturer says to run. So, you know, the bottom line is there is lab testing and there's real world testing. This does exactly what I tell it to. That's the bottom line. So I put probably an ounce of the universal dressing from the one system at detailjuice.com, uh, which is incredibly concentrated. Uh, I put one ounce in here, but that's diluted one part product to six parts water. So I'm gonna go ahead, spray it on, and then wipe it in with a towel. I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, look at all that vapor. Well, it is a water-based product. Um, and as far as the vapor goes, it's not toxic. But go ahead and use a respirator if you feel more comfortable. That's it for the uh, seats. Even at one to six, this left a slightly shinier situation than I prefer. However, I wanted more of the good stuff in there for this initial application. Moving forward, I won't use, I'll actually dilute it even further, but I see I've got some wear here. So I just wanna get that extra protected. So put a little product there, work it in, and you're good to go. I'm gonna do my door panels. Literally just spray 
a little bit on and wipe it in doesn't take a lot again with this air injection situation you're using less product than ever before so not only do you get already awesome value from the new one system products but you're also taking that a step further by using the air injection situation so awesome value and that's it i'm gonna go ahead and finish up the interior all right peeps she's all done the interior uh like i said i used the new universal dressing from the one system at detailjuice.com and looks awesome i extra hydrated everything because i had never done this vehicle before uh, but this interior is now all cleaned up um, the vents do not smell uh, like old man piss anymore and uh, i don't smell any lingering scent of mothballs um, not sure why he had mothballs in there unless it was sitting around and you know old people like mothballs but um not sure why that was uh what it smelled like but it was uh but i i don't smell any anything that resembles mothballs at all uh while i was in there i actually did a couple of additional things i remounted my uh microphone for my bluetooth and I uh, swapped this guy out. If you're ever working on a C5 vet and you want to swap these clips out, the other one was broken, but there was a brand, this brand new one was actually in the console when I bought the car. I'm sure it was because when he tried to take that screw out, this plastic piece was actually uh, adhered to uh, this piece. And this is actually just wrapped in vinyl. But anyway, it was, it was stuck to that. So I actually had to uh, very carefully pull it out and then uh, just bolt that back up there, so that's good. But anyway, interior's all good. Uh, smells fresh and clean. I'm actually not even gonna put the ozone generator back in here because it smells great. So if you got questions for me, 813-846-4406. Uh, I'm always available to help you in your detailing endeavors. And uh, check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we only talk about my products, my processes, and what I've got going on. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it taught you something. But the bottom line to this whole thing we did today was you got to remove the root of the problem before you can get the scent to go away. This bad odor, the bad odors are caused from something. It's just not a bad smell. It's bacteria growing somewhere that's creating that odor. So you've got to clean up the bacteria and the mess and then you can address the, the smell in the vehicle. So I believe I've got it straight. I will be putting those odor bombs on detailjuice.com in the neutral air variety. It actually smells very good, believe it or not. Uh, and then if you don't have an ozone generator for your business, I charge 30 bucks an hour to run the thing. So it's 60 bucks for the two hours. Um, it is what it is. And that's an additional upcharge if you want me to run it in your car. It takes time, even though I'm not doing anything for that time. It is usage of the equipment and it is time taken to do the job on your car but don't forget to check out the uh, cabin air filter in your vehicle uh, because that cabin air filter if it gets clogged with stuff or even gets wet and then dries you get mold you get mildew bacteria grows that can cause the scent from the air ducts but anyway check me out on instagram gary.dean.35 and if you got questions for me let me know but check out detailjuice.com for my brand new one system and all my other awesome products if you got questions let me know i can't help you if you don't ask have a good day guys